my name. Victory is my name, my name. Come on. have to be a song I am tempted but it doesn't have to be a song no more shackles no more chains no more bondage I am free. one more praise one more praise come on no more shock no more
I just want you to lift up your hands. The king is already here. The food has been stirred. The food has already been stirred. And the king of glory is already here. So we just want to lift up our voice and worship the king of glory. We just want to give the king of glory all the praise that he deserves. The woman with the issue of blood had had the many miracles that Jesus was doing. So although she was not worthy to go before the king, she went there. By faith, she received her healing. This morning, come all ye with all your imperfections, with all your brokenness, lay it at the altar, because the king is here, and the food has been stirred already. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are king. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why would we wait if we pray them? Now in vain, so everybody let your voice again. Yeah, build this place. I just wanna be with you. I just wanna be with you. Yes, the word, yes, the word. Well, bow down and say you are. Yes, the word, yes, the word, yes, the word. We'll bow down and say you are. Every man will bow down and say you are. So last God, so last God, so last God, right now. Why do we have to wait? If we can praise and worship Him.
worship you for me. I don't know what God has done for you in the past. I don't know what God has done for you now. But I want us to take a few seconds. Just look through your life. Everything that has happened in your life. And I want you to think about it. What has God done for you? That you believe that nobody can take his praise. The whole church. We are going to sing it with all the instruments. One, two, let's go. I will not be. Come on, you can be louder than that. Yes, God. Yes, God. As long as I have breath in me, I can never stop. Yeah. Who am I that you are so mindful of me? You pick me up from the Mary Clay. Bless the 
my soul will worship. You're my redeemer. You reign. You reign. 
deserve the highest praise There's nobody but you oh, Lord, we give our crowns to you We say that you reign You are God Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus who can stand against our King of Kings? Who can stand against the King of Glory? Father, this morning, your saints have got it. And we call upon you as God and God alone to receive our worship, O oh God. The great I am, the Almighty, the Emperor of the universe, the Master of the saints, tonight we bow down with the 24 elders and we worship you God and we name you King and we say you are holy and we say you are mighty and we say you are the ruler we bless you Jesus we give you all the glory in the name of Jesus and all shall say Amen Breakfast Center, welcome to our celebration service. I'm Haratu, and we just experienced amazing worship. Thank you for choosing to worship with us this morning. We are expecting a powerful word from the man of God, but before that, let's listen to some following announcements. Join World Movers Generation, also known as WNG, on the prayer line every other Tuesday at 7 p.m. for Bible studies and to pray. It is a time of learning, spiritual empowerment, and growing in God's word. We can't wait to see you there. Every woman in this house is a part of Royal Ladies. Join us on the prayer line this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. The Deborah of our time, Mama Esther, leads us to pray for ourselves and our families. Join Pillars for Christ, our prayer ministry for the church, every Wednesday in person at 8 p.m. Do not miss our prayer and prophetic service this Friday at 8 p.m. This is a time of power and the prophetic. Come and see the amazing things that God is doing. The premier choir of the church, Praising Showers, meets here on Saturdays at 4 p.m. to rehearse for Sunday service. Join them at 4 p.m. to use your voice to draw down the presence of God. Service in the house of the Lord is never in vain. Join the ushers every Saturday at 5 p.m. on the prayer line to prepare for Sunday services. If you refuse to allow your shepherd to be struck down, then join Armor Bearers, the intercessory ministry for our senior pastor to pray for him on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Once again, I welcome you to Royal House Breakthrough Center, expecting a mighty word from the Lord. But before then, let's welcome Praising Showers to stir up the atmosphere. You are our strength. You are our glory. Our confidence is not in the arm of flesh, in our abilities, in anything we can see, in anything we have done, our confidence is in you. God, as a child of God, God has given us certain promises in his word. Anybody who exercises faith, experience the reward of faith. If you enjoy this Christian journey and walk with God, you must be a man and a woman of faith. What is faith? Very simply put, is that confidence in God, having confidence in God. If you are not operating by the principle of faith, you suck, you compromise and you keep in. Because every faith will be tried and tested. Your strength is in your faith. That is why when the enemy wants to attack you, the first thing he attacks is your faith. Today I prophesy over your life that your faith in God will never fail. I don't know what you are, what your confidence is in. I don't know who you are believing in. I don't know who you are trusting. I don't know who you are leaning on. But I came to announce to you, your faith will deliver you from every danger, will deliver you from every trial, will deliver you from every difficulty. It will deliver you from every trouble. Am I speaking to somebody here? 
I am yet to see anybody who believe God and God turned his back on me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, church, hallelujah. Hallelujah, church, good morning, hallelujah. It is a privilege to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I believe though in this season, the Lord is unveiling eyes. He is aligning hearts. He's raising dead things. He's causing dead dreams to become awakened again. And so as we minister this song, amen, amen, let this resonate with you in this season. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, God. Yeah.
submit to you that uh, Moses in today's day might have been called a rebel leader. May I submit to you that David was a king, might have been a president. Our daily lives with God is, goes beyond what we call church. Every single day is a battle the battlefield. What made David a man after God's own heart was that when he killed the lion, when he killed the bear, in his line of duty as taking care of the sheep, he didn't see it as his own strength and he didn't see it as a battle for him. He saw it as a battle for God. And for every victory, he gave it to God. That was because for every fight, it was for God. For every fight in your office, in your home, in your quest to become what you believe God has called you to become. It is a battle for God. And it's only when you recognize that, that you understand your purpose and you see the place of God in your daily lives. I just felt that I should share that. Thank you very much, man of God, for having me here again. After all my strength is gone, and you I will be strong, I look to you, I look to you, and when melodies are gone, and you You see, I, I'm just gaining my life. Because to gain my life, I have to lose my sight. So I refuse to see all the pain, the bitterness, rejection that has stained me. I, I'm sustained by my blindness. I close my eyes to sorrow that I may see tomorrow. Because this life has tried to scar me. And yet, with these same perils, he carves me into his image. Yes, my father loves me. He loves me too much to leave me half dead. His work in me must be complete because on the cross, he said, it is finished. The value of those words has not diminished. I am complete in him. And so these trials, they are just complete in me. For my light afflictions cannot be compared to the glory I had. And so I choose glory instead. I rejoice in the fact that he bled. I take his word as my bread. His blood poured out for me in his death. He formed me with his words. He forged me. He forsook himself on the cross to carry my curse. And so I, I close my eyes to the pain of this hour. That I may partake of his power, his glory, his majesty. Now I see 
For I am blind to sin. I look to you. After all my strength is gone. And you I can't be strong. I look to you. Help me. Christians, I, I, I'll speak about myself, you get to a point where you realize that you've done everything, but then it's only God who can help you. You even try to live a holy life, but then even then, the Bible says that it is the Spirit in us that causes us even to do and to will of His good pleasure. It is only Him. And so God gave me this song. I think I'll just sing, I don't know if I'll use I hope it blesses you. Feed my spirit and save my soul. Break me apart and make me whole. Hold me in your arms and make me know everything will be okay. Feed my spirit and save my soul. Break me apart and make me whole. Hold me in your arms and make me know Everything will be okay Cause I'm close to Falling I'm falling I'm falling I'm falling Lord Said I'm close to Drums, could you help me? Falling I'm falling I'm falling I'm falling Lord Said I'm close to you can join me falling. I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling. One more time. Said I'm close to. You can join. Falling. I'm falling, I'm falling. Two more times. Said I'm close to. Falling. I'm falling. Jehovah, 
and save my soul. Break me apart and make me whole. Hold me in your arms and make me know everything will be all right. Thank you. Then I'm falling, 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 falling. I appreciate the man of God. Let's appreciate God. Again, let's celebrate the grace of God. Let's celebrate the goodness of God. Let's appreciate God for His presence. Oh, I said, let's appreciate God. Let's thank one God one more time for the servant of God. What a word! Amen. Amen. I like an atmosphere of hope, an atmosphere of expectation an atmosphere of faith where you believe that your coming this morning is not in vain. Where you believe that the burden shall be lifted and the yoke shall be destroyed. It's your expectation that shall be granted. If you came in here with no expectation, I guarantee you, you walk back the same. Or even worse than you came in. But if you came here believing beyond a shadow of doubt that he is more than able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above what you can ever ask or imagine, it shall be so in your life. The woman with the issue of blood said, she told herself, if I can only, she had expectation, when Jesus was passing and minding his own business. Amen. For the next one minute, just lift up your voice and thank God for this morning. As the, as the word of God comes, it will fall on good grounds. The word of God will profit you. The word of God will transform you. The word of God will bring healing. It will bring deliverance. The word of God will bring salvation, revival. The word of God will bring restoration. Lift up your voice. Take your seat in this place. Let me be your mouthpiece. Anoint my lip of clay. I'll speak nothing but that which you have ordained for me to declare this morning. Let the word that is coming forth fall on good grounds. Let it transform lives. Let it heal. Let it deliver. Let it save. Let it bring revival in the life of your people. We pray that our lives will not remain the same after the preaching of your word. We shall live here transformed. We shall live here brand new people. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. So we started speaking about the principles of faith. We have been talking about faith. Last week, we started talking about faith and we traveled through the scriptures and we saw from the scriptures and I declared God's word that it's a necessity, 
nobody exists or function or will experience the fullness of God except they are working by faith and they are operating by faith. And it's, it's important that as long as you belong to this sheepfold, you belong to the body of Christ, faith is a necessity. It's not, it's not an option. Faith is not something that is for a select few. It's for preachers to have faith or it's for intercessors to have faith or it's for evangelists to have faith. Faith is a necessity for every believer in the kingdom. Let me put it this way. Faith, in other terms, is the currency that is used for transaction in this kingdom. Faith is the currency. Let me, let me have, anybody has cash on you because I hardly carry cash, like a dollar bill. Anybody has a, a bill, any amount, any, I'll give it back to you. I'm not going to take your money. Pr please bring it to me. Which one is the highest value? How much is that one? How much was yours? But because you know that when money hits this altar, the altar it takes the money. <laughs> it's not me. I'm not taking your money, but the altar is going to receive. <laughs> Somebody shout your whole So, 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 how many of you know this uh, this uh, uh, bill in my hands? You know the uh, the dollar bill, right? This is the dollar twenty dollar bill, right? This twenty dollar bill. When I walk out of this place and I go to any shop, it can I'll be able to buy whatever worth $20, $20, right? Whatever that is worth $20, like this bottle of water probably is like what? $2 or $1.50 or whatever it is. This 20, if I have this $20 bill, I'll be able to buy this. Whatever this can afford, I'll be able to buy. If I walk to the store, they will not deny me. Whatever I pick up to $20, I'll be able to take it out and walk out. If this same dollar bill, I take this dollar bill and I travel to Canada, or I travel to Ghana, or I travel to Liberia, wherever it is, even though this has value here in America, $20 bill, if I walk to any shop in Ghana and I give them $20 bill, they'll be looking at me like, what? What is this? Because in Ghana, it's not, they don't, the currency there is not dollars. The currency is CDs. As much as this has value here in America, when I step into Ghana, it has no value. Why? The only time it will have value is when I convert this into Ghanaian CD. Then when I walk into a shop, a Ghanaian shop, I'll be able to spend the value of that $20 in CD equivalent. Am I communicating here? So the same way in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of God, when you have faith, it doesn't matter your location. It doesn't matter what is going on. You can transact business in the spirit. Because faith is the currency of the kingdom and is the currency of the spirit. Any man or woman, that is why you can be in Afghanistan. If you are operating by the currency and the, and the spirit of faith, you will get the same results as same as the person that is working here in America. Faith, there is no limitation when it comes to the transaction of the spirit. Someone say faith. So, you can be a billionaire or you can be a, 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 a millionaire in, in, in one currency, but when you arrive in America, you are not a millionaire until your, your, your millions is converted to the American currency, you can never use it here. Whenever I have an opportunity to travel and I, when I go to Africa to go to Ghana in specific, anytime I arrive, the first thing I have to do is to, uh, to change my money. So that the dollars, the money that I have, I'll be able to use it in the country where I'm located. In the same way, in the kingdom of God, for you to function and to operate, you need the currency of faith. No matter how much you have, if you don't convert it, it will never be of any value. Same with God, in the kingdom of God, if you want to... Uh, to assess the kingdom and you want to see the results or to be successful or the rewards that come as being kingdom sons and daughters, we must operate or we must live by faith. I love the scriptures in Romans chapter 1 verse 17. It said, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Someone say by faith. I love Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 which says, we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. We the just we who have been justified by salvation, we must live by faith. So you cannot be a man and a woman who doesn't have faith in God. Because 
faith, men and women of faith see things differently. See things from God's perspective, not man's perspective. We are talking about faith. Listen, it doesn't matter how much oil they pour on you. How many hands are laid on you? It doesn't matter. I can take my coat and even give it to you as a gift. When there is no faith, all of this thing is useless. Prayer is by faith. For you to have answers to your prayer is by faith. The Bible says this is the confidence, the trust we have in him. That anytime we pray, he hears. Prayer is... <laughs> faith is therefore the substance of things hoped for by the evidence we have not seen. So that means you are believing in the natural, there is no evidence, but in the spirit you believe that whatever you are asking, it will be done and granted. And, and we said here last week that anyone, that anyone that did anything for God, anyone who was successful in their assignment, in their purpose, in their whatever, their destiny for which they came here on earth, moved by faith. Because faith moves you from the natural realm and places you in the supernatural. And we understand as Christians that it is the spirit that controls the physical. So the supernatural overrides the natural. I am talking to somebody here for you to understand the necessity of you walking in faith and operating by faith. Today, begin to see things. And, uh, and, and, and I'll, I'll come to that place in a minute. It's not that when you are walking by faith, it means that everything is all right. No, most of the time, everything is not all right. That's why you need faith. For we call the things that be not as though they were. Go to Hebrews chapter 11 with me. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Let me see the verse number. Okay, good. The verse 1. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. But the evidence of things we have not seen. So, when you are walking in faith, you are believing, you are hoping for something, but the evidence is not there yet. So, what brings the evidence which you are believing, the expectation, the desire into reality is your faith. Faith is therefore the substance of the thing we are hoping for, but the evidence we don't have not seen. For we understand that by faith, the world which we see was created by God, by the word of God. So everything that is visible came out of the realm of the spirit because a man or God spoke by faith and it manifest, manifested. So the things we are seeing, the life we are living, the things that we are experiencing here on earth came as a result was was, was uh, uh, showed up or manifested as a result of faith speaking. Let the weak say, I am strong. You are weak, but you are saying that you are strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. You are struggling, but you are saying that I am rich. Someone say faith. Someone say, I believe. Somebody shouted again, say faith. And, and we establish that it's important that your faith must be in the right thing. Because some of us today, we have faith in men of God. We have faith in some prophet's prayer. We have faith in our social standing. We have faith in our qualification and our resume. But I love Mark chapter 11 verse 22. It says, have faith in God. Your faith must be towards God. Not to your, your qualification, not to your degree, not to anything that you have. Your faith must be centered on God. Some trust in chariots. Some have faith in chariots. Some trust in horses, but will trust in the name of the Lord. Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. We, the righteous, will run into it and we are safe and secure. I don't know who you are trusting in this morning. I don't know who you are depending on, but I am trusting in God that all things are working together for my good. I know that this was a faith that Joseph operated in when his brother sold him and when he was rejected and when he went through all all that he went through as a young man, his faith was in God. So he trusted God in the midst of the challenge. As a houseboy, he trusted God. As a prisoner, he trusted God. And the other day, my Bible said Joseph went to bed as a prisoner. He woke up in the morning, a prime minister, the second in command. His faith in God was rewarded. I am talking to somebody here. When you are a man and a woman of faith, you don't become bitter because of the experiences you are going through. You, you, do, you are not angry 
agree with God because things are not going the way you are believing God to go. It's just a temper. You know that this light affliction cannot be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. I am talking to a person of faith uh, who is down at the moment, uh, who is struggling right now, who is saying that there is no hope for me. You are saying that where is God? Uh, it's like I'm all alone in this battle. It's like the world is against me. Nothing is working for me. Whatever I touch doesn't work. Uh, I came to announce to you that if I faith in God, uh, that all things are working together for your good. Uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly is working together. I know you faced a disappointment last year, last month, uh, but it is all working together. I know they rejected you, but it is all working together. I know they said no to you, but it is all working together. I know they said uh, it is not possible, but with God, all things are possible. I don't know who you are trusting. Uh. Some people believe in men. Uh. Some people believe in the system. Uh. Some people believe in hard work. Uh. But as for me and my house, uh, we will trust in the name of the Lord. Uh. We will depend on God. Uh. We will have faith in God uh, because he's too faithful to fail. He has never failed yet uh, and he's not about to begin with me. Am I talking to somebody here? Yeah? May your faith in God be rewarded. Uh. May your faith in God never be disappointed. Uh. May God prove himself faithful and true in your life. Uh. As long as your eyes are lifted up to the hills, uh, your help is coming. Uh. I'm talking to somebody. Uh. I don't know what your convictions are. I don't know what your beliefs are. I don't know what it is that you are standing upon. Uh, but I am standing on a solid rock uh, that cannot be moved. Uh. All other grounds may be sinking sand. Uh, but I know a God uh, that when the wind, when the storms arise, uh, he will raise the standard against them. Uh. My enemies will come up against me one way. But my Bible tells me there's at least seven ways. Uh, a thousand shall fall on my right hand. Uh, Ten thousand on my left. Uh, only with my eyes, with my faith, shall I see the reward of the wicked. Uh, I'm talking to somebody here. You feel like you have been delayed. Uh, but I came to announce to you. Delays are not denied. Uh, at the other day, for 400 years, uh, they were in captivity. But it they delayed for another 30 years. Uh, but the same God who gave the promise uh, was able to bring them out. Uh, I don't know what God has said about you. I don't know what God has promised. Uh, but it shall come to pass. Clap your and say, my faith is in God. Say, my faith is in God. Faith is in God. I am trusting. Trusting. Trusting only thee. I am trusting. Trusting. Say it again, I am trusting. I, I am trust. Say trust. Say trust in trust. Say no. Say I am trusting. I am trust. Tell the Lord, I am trusting you, God. Trusting you. In this challenging times. Some trust in chariots, others in horses, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. Our faith is in God. So we look, we saw here from Abraham's life last, uh, last week, we saw how that Abraham, God gave him a promise and he trusted God for the fulfillment of that promise. By what he did, he showed his faith in God, his belief in God. So this redefines our, our uh, gives us, uh, uh, give us a new definition of what faith is. Faith is action based on your convictions and the integrity of God's word. So faith is your, the action you take because of what you believe, your conviction, where you stand. So you cannot tell me you are a man and a woman of faith, but your actions do not line up to what you confess. 
If you say you will have faith, it must show with a corresponding action of obedience. Abraham, leave your father's house, leave your kindred, leave what you are familiar with, and go to a land that I am showing you, Abraham. And Abraham immediately obeyed and started moving. As God has instructed in obedience and faith in God, he did not know where he was going, but God told him, Abraham, leave your father's house, leave your family, leave your kindred to a place I will show you. God did not even tell him the destination, but he had so much confidence in this God. He was so assured. He had this conviction that God will not lead him to a place of destruction. God will not lead him to a place of death. There is a way that seems right in the eyes of man. The end thereof is death and destruction. But there is a way that when God is leading you, you shall arrive at the destination on record time. Am I talking to somebody here? I see you arriving where God has destined for you because of your faith and your trust in him and you are taking your step of obedience in accordance to his word and because of the, of the, the integrity of his word he is about to honor your, his faith in your life. Faith is action. Taking action, of action in obedience to the conviction that you have about who God is and the integrity of his word. So therefore, conviction therefore will always lead us to have faith in God and to take action. So when you, if you are convinced that God is God, who he truly says he is, it leads you to act. Many of us do not act because we don't believe that what God has said he can do. But my Bible tells me in Numbers chapter 23 verse 19 that, 19 that God is not a man. That he should lie. Has he said it and will he not do it? Have you spoken and will he not make it good? I am talking about the faith in the kingdom. The currency you need to transact business. You must be a man and a woman of faith. No matter the circumstance, the mountain, the giant. When Jesus said, have faith in God, then he went further and told them, you see this mountain that is in front of me? If you have faith, as small as a master seed, your faith is unwavering, it's unshaking. You are not double-minded. You shall say to this mountain, be ye moved and the mountain shall obey you. Have you ever seen a physical mountain hearing the voice of a man and moving? No. But that is what faith does. Faith is telling us that mountain stands for impossibility. If a man and a woman is operating by the principle of faith, there is nothing like impossible. There is nothing like it cannot be done. There is nothing like it can never happen. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes, you can be a woman at the age of 90 when your faith, let it be according to your word. Listen, you can be a virgin like Mary who has never had an affair with a man. But when you believe, you have conviction of the God who is speaking, who has spoken, who has declared his word. He said, let it be unto me according to your word. I'm talking to somebody here. When you are like Peter, you have been fishing all night, you caught nothing. What the master is telling you didn't make sense. He's said nevertheless at your word because he's convinced of who is speaking the one who is declaring the word i'm talking to somebody here i don't know what where your conviction lies if only you are trusting this god that we serve that i am that i am the one who saved you the one who redeemed and rescued you the one who brought you out of darkness into your light into light that same god is able to heal all your infirmity that way he's able to make a way where there seems to be no way that same god is able to deliver you from from every stronghold. I don't know what is after your life. I don't know what is pursuing what has troubled you. Last night you couldn't sleep because of your problems, but I came to announce to you, release your faith right now towards the Most High God. He who created the heavens and the earth and everything therein. He said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. You have been written in the palm of my hands. Your problems, your woes are continually before me. He says, the number of your hair on your hair are accounted for. I am talking to to somebody here. Yeah. He created you in his image. Uh, so therefore he has the ability to do exceedingly abundantly far above what I can ever ask or imagine. I am talking to a faith man and a faith believer. Somebody here this morning uh, and you are saying that I don't know how it can be. Can this thing be since I know no man. Uh, he said the Holy Ghost shall overshadow you and that which is impossible shall become possible. I am talking to somebody. 
there is a God that when you release your faith, uh, what looks impossible in the eyes of man, uh, impossibility are only in the realms of humanity, not in the realms of divinity. I am talking to somebody here. Uh, the God that has he will serve is I am that I am. And Moses said, if I go and Pharaoh asks me, who said, tell that I am that I am sent me and tell him that let my people go. He may be stubborn. Uh, he may not, he may delay. He may do all sorts of things. Uh, but at the end, my word will prevail. At the end, he must let my people go. I'm talking to somebody here. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you are feeling, what is going on, what you are experiencing. Your faith in God shall be rewarded. There is nothing you cannot do. I'll come to you. Hold on one second. Faith is believing who God is and that whatever he has said, he's able to do it. In Exodus chapter 14, we are told of the story of the Israelites from chapter 12 in the book of Exodus, they have been in bondage for a very long time, for 400 years, as was prophesied, as was spoken. Please help me. Thank you. So it has been prophesied that they must be in captivity for over 400 years. The 400 year came and they were still in bondage. We are talking about faith in action. It was time for their deliverance and liberty, but they were still in bondage. Because now, they were, at this point, they were comfortable in Egypt. You know, nothing. They were okay. They were eating cucumber and lettuce. So now they were okay. Like some of you, when you arrived in America, you became comfortable. Because now you have three square meal. When you were wherever you were, your country before you moved here, you only used to eat one. And you, you, you really valued God and you have faith in God. Because even the one time you had to eat, you had to pray and seek the face of God. So they were comfortable. And then until a new king, king arose who did not know Joseph. And the Bible says he began to oppress them and suppress them, you know, intensify their pain and misery. Then they realized that, oh, there is a prophecy over our lives that must come to pass. So the Bible says in their groaning, they cried out to God. And their cry came to God. And God said, I've seen the affliction they are in. And I've heard their cry. So I have come down to deliver them. For, and for 430 years, deliverance came for them. Now they were out of bondage. We know the story already. What happened? That the firstborn of the Egyptians died night. Every house, the Bible said there was mourning, except the house where the blood was for exemption for the Israelites. So now fast forward, they are on their way to the promised land where God had already promised them and told them where he was taking them. God had already assured them where they were going. They knew where they were going. And the Bible says that the Lord did not permit them to use a shorter route, the route of the Philistines, even though that was shorter, because there were three different routes that would lead to the promised land. One of them was the route through the Philistines' camp. And they knew that these Philistines, they are, they are warriors. They like fighting. They, they like every, any opportunity they have, they are going to fight. And he said, these people, they are being slavery and controlled and bonded for so long, they are not ready to fight. And I don't want them to get discouraged and then return back. So I'm going to reroute them and take them to, through a journey where they will not face opposition and resistance, which was the wilderness way. So God rerouted them. And on the way to the promised land, they had to cross the Red Sea. So now they were out of bondage, out of uh, oppression. They thought that they were free from their enemies, heading to their promised land. Then they come to the shore of the Red Sea, and now they are stuck at the Red Sea. They are stuck at the Red Sea. In front of them was the Red Sea, and behind them was the Egyptians that they thought they have left them pursuing them. Exodus chapter 14. Look at the verse number 10. Someone say faith. No, no. And, 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 and I'm going to show you from scripture that sometimes you will come to that place where you'll be stuck between your past and your future. Do you know how, how, how horrible it is? When you are not where you want to be or where God has promised you. And more so, you know that, no, I'm not where I used to be before. But I'm not, also not arrived where God has promised me. That, that's a, a miserable, miserable place to be. 
where you are stuck, you don't know whether you are moving forward or you are coming backward. But today, your faith is about to catapult you to the next level. Am I talking to somebody here? You have so much vision, dream, expectation. You know that there is more in you, but you are stuck between the Red Sea and your Egyptians who are behind you. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes. And behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes. And behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Then they said to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us out of Egypt? Is it not the word that you told, which we told you in Egypt, saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than, than that we should die in the wilderness? And Moses said to the children, do not be afraid. Tell your neighbor, don't be afraid. Oh, tell your neighbor, don't be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. Let me go to the next verse, 14. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Uh -huh. Next verse. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. So, so God now, Moses and the children of Israel now see the Egyptians and Pharaoh and his chariot who are pursuing them because the Bible says that when they realize that the Egyptians have left, the Israelites have left Egypt, now they change their mind. Even after losing their firstborn, they change their mind. They say, no, 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 no. We made a mistake. So who are going to be the ones serving us? Who are going to be building our houses for us? Who are going to be our slaves and our servants? No, we cannot allow these people to. So they change their mind to pursue the uh, Israelites. When they, they were almost close to the Israelites, the Israelites raised their head and they saw the Egyptians coming. Immediately, the Bible said they were afraid. And then they began to blame Moses. Moses. Why have you done this to us? Look, we cannot escape. The rest is in front of us. Behind that, look at the chariots that are coming after. How are we going to escape? And those days, Egypt was the power. You know, Egypt uh, military might is no match. I mean, you cannot defeat them. Every battle they have been in, they've won. So the Bible says that. And Moses, Moses told them that, hey, you know something? I know what you are seeing. I know what you are hearing. You are hearing the foot of the, the chariots that are coming. I know that the Red Sea is in front of us. There is no way we can cross this Red Sea. But guess what? Stand still. Don't be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Because the Egyptians you are seeing today, you shall see no. That is a man of faith. Moses saw chariots that was after them. Saw the Red Sea in front of them. But he still tells the Israelites, don't be afraid. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord because what you are seeing is temporal. What you are experiencing is temporal. What you are going through is seasonal. I'm talking to somebody here. You may be faced with certain challenges around you. You look to the right, there is a problem. To the left, there is a problem. In front of you, there is a problem. Behind you, there is a problem. And you are asking yourself, what is going to happen to me? How am I going to survive this? I came to announce to you that don't be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord because the Egyptians you are seeing today, you shall see them no more. The poverty you are seeing today, you shall see no, no more. The sickness you are seeing today, you shall see no, no more. The delay you are experiencing today, you shall experience it no more. The barrenness you are going through today, it shall be no more. Am I talking to somebody here? Clap your hands and say, I believe. Say, oh God, I believe your word. I am not afraid of the multitude, of the multitude that after my life. After my I, life. Declare I declare that I believe, I believe your, word your word that I shall get, I shall get to my promised land. To my promised I, will land. Enter I will enter my Cana. My Cana. I am moving forward am moving as, you spoken, as you have spoken by your word. By your word. I, shall arrive. I shall arrive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are talking about faith. What do you do when you are faced with the Red Sea and the Egyptians are after you? That is when you need faith. 
my faith has found a resting place. No device, no we, 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 are, we are a generation of people who, who we succumb at the slightest opposition. So I can imagine if it was us who, was, who were the Israelites in that situation. Many of us would have believed, behaved like them. But we walk by faith, not by sight. It's not what you are hearing. It's not how you are feeling. It's not what the experts are saying. It's what God is saying. And let me say this. Faith, faith is generated when you know what God has said. Many of us are faithless because we don't even know God's promise. Israelites, hey, God told you, I'm bringing you out. Go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go so that they will go and worship me. And he told Moses that you will take them to the promised land as I prophesied to their father, Abraham. So they already know the promise that they were entering into the promised land. So why do you think that God will bring you to this place and leave you alone? People of faith, one, are people who overcome fear. Fear and faith does not dwell in the same place. Anytime you become fearful, it's because there is no faith. So when they saw the chariot, they saw the Red Sea, the Bible said they were afraid. Fear is a state of helplessness. Fear is a state of where you, where you are saying that God cannot do anything about the situation. People of faith, I know they diagnose you. They say you have cancer, but don't be afraid. I know you just lost the job, but don't be afraid. I know no, the man just dumped you, but don't be afraid. I am talking about faith here. Where we call the things that be not as though they were. When, when you are seeing giants, you are saying we are more than able. When you are seeing the rest, you are saying that I don't know how I'm going to cross this rest, but I believe God that if he has to give me wings to fly, so he shall be. Am I talking to somebody here? I don't know how it shall be. I don't know how possible, how it can be. I don't know whether I'll be able, how I'm going to survive what I am going to. I don't know how things are going to work out but I know that all things work together for good for them that love God and those who have been called I am talking to somebody here I don't know what you are going through what you are experiencing in the season of faith you must have the eye of possibility you must come to that place where you are not afraid of a thousand that has fallen on your right hand ten thousand on your left the other day in second chronicles chapter 20 three kings had come against Jehoshaphat and the Israelites and the Bible said when they heard, they received the message that three kings were coming after them. Three nations were coming. They were afraid. Uh, and Jehoshaphat went to God uh, and consulted God. Uh, and he came back and said, God assured him, uh, you don't have to fight in this battle. The battle is the Lord. Uh, I don't know what you are fighting. I don't know what you are contending. Uh, it comes to a point in your life uh, when the battle must become God's battle. Uh, he says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Uh, the other day, Goliath fell. Uh, you come against me with a spear and a javelin. I don't have any weapons. Uh. You come against me with years of experience. Uh. I don't have any experience. Uh. But I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Uh. The one who created the heavens and the earth. Uh. That is a man of faith. Uh. Standing upon the foundation of faith. Uh. Upon his God. His conviction uh, that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly. The Bible says he took five stones uh, and he brought a giant down who has been fighting all his years. Uh. A giant that the kings could not contend with. Uh. A giant when the army could not fight her. Uh, I am talking to somebody here. May your faith propel you to a place uh, that the storms of life will not stop you. Uh. You will not sink in adversity. You will not drown in the water. Clap your hands and say, I believe God. Clap your hands and say, I believe God. And any storm, any rest in, in front of me is no match no to the God inside of me. Inside of any Egyptian, any after my life, to keep me in bondage, in slavery, cannot hold me bound. Say, I break away. Say, the same God who made a way for the Israelite is making a way for me. Yes. If the Israelites, after receiving a prophetic word that they are going to the promise, still, the Egyptians changed their mind. 
and still came before the rest of you, why do you think that you will not go through sin? Fear is one of the dangerous things that the enemy uses against us. And you know why he, 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 he releases fear? Because when there is fear, now you shift up, you, your, 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 you, sh- you, you take your eyes and your focus off God, and now it opens you up for him to be able to attack you. Someone say fear. Or someone say fear. Say, I come against any spirit of fear. Yeah, fear will always cripple your confidence. It will cripple you. He said, fear not. Moses, don't you see the Red Sea? Fear not. Moses, don't you see the Egyptians? Fear not. Moses, can't you see I'm losing? God, can't you see I'm losing my house? Fear not. God, can't you see I am growing? Fear not. God, can't you, didn't you just hear the diagnosis the doctors gave me? Fear not. Isaiah chapter 41, he said, fear not when you go through the waters. When you go through the fires, I'll be right there. One of the weapons of the enemy to counter your faith is fear. And we are afraid because of what we have seen, what we hear, and how we are feeling. I knew, I knew a lady, eh? she was okay. She was walking around okay. She had gone for her annual physical checkup. And then once they ran it, they detected something, and then further test was made. She was walking, nothing wrong with her. She's not been sick. She wasn't having any symptoms, nothing. And then they diagnosed her, immediately they diagnosed her with a certain kind of cancer. It was a yearly re, um, um, physical. And then they diagnosed her, they detected her, and then she was diagnosed with that. Can you believe within three months she died? You know what Job said? Job said, the thing that I greatly fear and that which I dreaded has come to me and happened. All this time Job was walking around, he was dreading that he was going to lose everything. That was his confession. So sometimes, you know, when the devil wants me to fear, then I tell myself, I'm not afraid of the problem. Whom shall I fear if God be for me? What shall we say to this thing? No, no, you might... You, you see, uh, uh, Minister uh, Chrissy, the things you've been through with your health, if you were not somebody who had faith in God, you would have been a God. You would have forgotten about you by now. You'd have been dead. What he has survived for him to be sitting here? So you were telling me that the, your, your physician and the doctors themselves, they, they are amazed to see the transformation and the healing that has taken place. One day you say your physician made a statement. What did he say he told you? She said, uh, Mark, your numbers and everything, they are not good. <laughs> but whatever you are doing, just keep on doing it. Because you are, you are to- your reflection is different. From what I'm seeing from your labs and stuff like that, you shouldn't be standing here in front of me, loud mouth and everything like that. So whatever you are doing, please. I mean, on the medical side, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. But I believe in what you are doing. So just continue doing it. Are you clapping or you are doing something like clapping? That is faith. That is a man who when they have been diagnosed with something, they have given him a diagnosis. He's still saying that this is not my portion. It's not time for me to leave. He said, fear not. You see, you will not be pushed to the place of fear when there is nothing going on in your life. But one, one, one news. Hey, I remember I used to dread receiving a letter letters from certain place office whenever i see the letter from that place i'll be shaking like this i'll be like what is in there sometimes i, I leave the letter and i go and pray first before i come and open the letter because i was afraid and i, I i'm just afraid I'm, i didn't, didn't know what was going to come I, is there a bad news that is coming fear can cripple your confidence in your god Fear is a state of helplessness. When you are afraid, then you are saying that God cannot help you. So they came there and they said, oh, oh, Moses, Moses, we, we told you we should have stayed in Egypt. Do you think well, there were no graves in Egypt? What are you talking about? 
You saw the mighty hand of God. And it's amazing that these people had just seen God move mightily. The firstborn, there was mourning in the entire nation. But because they are seeing the Red Sea and they are seeing the Egyptians pursuing them, they thought it was impossible. What has brought you fear? You, you want to see your God move and act in your behalf? You must come to that place where you are not working in fear. You know, many people, you know the decisions they have made in life and the reason why they compromise is as a result of fear. They fear that they will never get married. So at this point, they settle for anything. I know people that they have settled that at this point, they just want to have a baby, no matter whether, it's in, 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 uh, 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 whether they are married or not. They don't care because they are afraid that they will never get married. But I have confidence in you. Jesus, I have confidence in you. Jesus, I have confidence in you. No, 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 no. When, when you fear uncertainty, you don't know what tomorrow holds. You see, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know the one that holds tomorrow. You know, that's why, you know the reason why I, 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 I'm so confident in God, so much, I have so much faith in God, because I know the one who holds tomorrow. He said he knows the end from the beginning. The one who created all things knows what will befall me tomorrow, even before I step into, into tomorrow. That is why I'm confident. I'm not, I'm not living this life on my own. God did not save me and bring me deliverance to come and leave me by this red sea and for me to sing and to perish, for my enemies to, to kill me. No, 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 no. God brought me out so that he may bring me in. This morning, my message is very simple, that don't entertain fear. What are you afraid of? Oh, deportation? There are people who are on deportation and it's, oh, Jesus. And it was reversed. Why are you afraid? So, he says, don't be afraid. Look, look, look at the verse again. Look at the verse again. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Because whenever fear sets in, you magnify the problem, the issue, than God, the God who is inside of you. Anytime that you magnify your problem above God, you begin to sing. Fear begins to grip you. So, in Numbers chapter um, 14, the Israelites have come to the promise, the land of Canaan. A land that God has promised them. These same Israelites, they arrive on the land and then the Bible says they saw giants in the land. Oh, 12 spies have been sent. They looked at the people, the Bible says they are huge and tall. They looked at them and they said, 10 of them said, no, we cannot. We cannot. We cannot. We cannot take this land from these people. Even though God has already said, I have given you the land. They saw the giant. You see, the fact that God gives a word and a promise does not negate or will not stop the enemy from encroaching and fighting and trying to deny you access to the land. But when you come to that place between God's promise and the fulfillment, that is where the, your faith must kick in. So they saw the giants, and then the ten said they cannot. So immediately they say, oh, we are like grasshoppers. These people will eat us up, they will kill us. And Joshua and Caleb, and the Bible said they had a different spirit. Joshua and Caleb said, they, they, said in, they said, no, we are more than able. Let us go at once. We are more than able. What was the difference between the two, Joshua and Caleb, and the other ten spies? The two of them saw that the giants that were on the land were no match to their God, not their own strength. Not their own capacity. He said, if God delights in us, he will give us the land. I am talking to somebody here. You must see things from God's perspective. The way you are seeing it, that's why fear is gripping you. Every day you are walking and you are afraid. Every time it's like you are living in fear. Every time you are asking yourself, is this thing going to be possible? You are crying. You are mourning. You are not happy. Life, you know, every time you are depressed, it's because you are seeing things from your own angle. 
the marriage is failing, but believe God, that what God puts together, let no man put asunder. That is faith. And God said, oh, these people, as much as I want to take them to the promised land, but because they have said that I cannot, because they don't have faith in me, all of them who say they cannot enter the land will all perish. And exactly, anyone who did not believe that God could take them to the promised land, they all perished. And the same land that they said it was impossible, they were, the giants were still in the land. They still entered the land and possessed the land. What are you talking about? Clap your hands in the name of Jesus. I'm angry, my spirit. Clap your hands in the name of Jesus. Say any spirit of fear. Any spirit. Tormenting my life. Tormenting my say, life. I say I arrest it. Say I come against. I come against. Anything, anything that has brought fear. Brought into, fear my life, into my life. That has crippled. That has crippled my, faith, my faith. That has taken. Away, away my confidence. confidence. Say, oh God, oh God, I crush it. I, crush I, declare, it. I declare the giant in me, the giant, the giant ahead of me, ahead is, of no me. is no match to the God to the inside, of inside of me. Any rescue any that is threatening that is my, progress. my progress, oh God, oh God. Arise. arise, any Egyptian, any Egyptian. After, my life. after my life, let them fall. Let them fall. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Do not fear. You know when you get to a certain age, they say your eggs are going to be, they're going to expire. Or is that what they say? Do the eggs expire or something? They run out. <laughs> I heard the eggs run out. <laughs> you, you need to go to the store and buy more. <laughs> no, I've had people, I've had people, I've had people that have told me, doctors that have told me, Pastor, you know, I'm growing. And I, there's no man showing up. And when you even look at the, the person, so beautiful and so nice, and you're wondering, what is it? And, and she was telling me, said, Pastor, I think I'm thinking about going to freeze my eggs. Because the doctors are advising her to do that. Because when she passes a certain age, the eggs will finish. And, and sometimes the, the reason being that also, you, they can, if even you are producing the eggs, they will not be as healthy as when you are younger. That's why they will all start telling you that when you give birth to the child, the child's nose will be on his head. You know, these doctors, man, they, I, no, no, but you don't blame them. They are going to pay the books, what they have learned. But thank God that they are not God. Thank God that they didn't create man. God said, do you know how the bones form in the, in the body, in the womb? It's amazing. When mommy was pregnant with uh, Jason, so we started going to the hospital. Then the sonogram, the first time went, me and you just see some black thing. Then they said, oh, they, 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 it's forming. The baby is forming. We went the next time, then they said, the eyes. Me, I'm not seeing, I'm just seeing some dots. They said, this is the eyes. I'm like, what eyes are you talking about? The next time we go, they say, oh, the ears are forming. The ears, this are the ears. Then I just saw a line. What is the line? What is here? So months down the line, everything began to become clear. Become clear. Now you can see the nose. You can see the ear, the real ear. You can see the mouth. You can see the fingers. And I said, wow, God is amazing. If science cannot explain how the child is formed, when the sperm meets the egg, what happened for the child and the bone to grow in the body? Why are you worried? Fear. For the thing that I greatly fear. The Egyptians were after them. The rest he was ahead of them. And then they were afraid. But guess what? Moses came with the word of the Lord and said, don't be afraid. Tell Neva, don't be afraid. Tell them, it doesn't matter what you are going through. Don't be afraid. Any problem you are in, there will be a way out. Fake people are people who are not afraid. You are not afraid. Two. Then he said, stand still and see. Stand still. Stand still. He said, fear not and stand still. 
Stand still means stand your ground on the basis of God's word. Stand still. Be unmovable. Don't allow what you are seeing, what you are hearing, move you. That is why you must engage God's word daily. Because there are going to be times that things will come against you that when you don't have God's word to counter it, listen, you will, you will be moving all over the place. When I see people, oh, me, I'm going to this church. Me, I'm going to this church. They are just faithless. It is faithlessness. Let me say this. Don't doubt in the dark what God told you in the light. Don't doubt in the dark what he told you in the light. Listen, there are going to be moments that what God has said looks like it will never come to pass. That is your dark moment. But as long as you have engaged, when God has given you a word, it's enough for you to hold on. That no matter what is going on around you, you will still rise above it. Am I talking to somebody here? You will still rise above it. You will still rise. And Abraham went to uh, God and said, did you not tell me, did you not assure me that you give me a child? At this time, he had gone. God told him, Genesis chapter 12, and there was no child coming. Genesis 15, he went back to God. He said, did you not say? He was holding on to God's word. Stand still. Be unmovable. What has God told you? And, and when I say God, God's word, I'm not talking about just prophecy. The prophecy is good. I remember many years ago, I've shared this story here. Many years ago when I came here, I, I received a prophecy. That prophecy really stood out for me for, for a strange reason. Uh, I, I believe that uh, uh, um, I wasn't expecting in the first place. And secondly... You know, the things that were spoken, I knew that it was God. Because the vessel that God spoke through, this white lady, I've never met in my life. She never know, knew me. And some of the things she said, even my own family had no idea. They didn't even have a clue. So she said and said things about me. And then, uh, 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 fast forward. Everything she said today has come to pass. But guess what? Through the journey and the process... Some of the things that she said was going to happen, the opposite was happening. Oh, God. Then sometimes I'll go back, I'll take the tape. Because for a strange reason, that day after the service, it was about 2002. After the service, those days were, we used to have the cassette. It's not now that, you know, they no longer do CDs and cassette players. So I, I requested, you could, you know, order the cassette. So I requested the cassette. So I have the cassette. So I'll go and play. That time I used to own a boombox. Some of you don't know, you don't even know what that is. So I'll slot in the castle. Whenever doubt begins to set in, fear begins to come, then whenever the enemy begins, like what I'm going is opposite, I'll play the word. I say, God, did you not say? I remind God of his word. And whenever I play the word, I am encouraged and I'm still. My heart is at peace. Many of us are not engaging the word. So Sundays like this, you know what he's doing? You are engaging the word. This word you are receiving, when you walk out of this place, I wish I could tell you that the whole week everything goes smoothly, but I'll be lying to you. When a race shows up in front of you, when an Egyptian is after your life, you remember that have faith in God. That this light affliction cannot be compared to the glory that is yet to be revealed. That if God be for me, nothing and nobody can be against me. Am I talking to somebody here? When you are faced and confronted with the enemy on the way, you are reminded, you engage the word. And Moses, and I love the scripture. The Bible says, God came to Moses and tell them to move forward. Oh, bro, I said, you are going to the promised land. Move forward. God, I mean, no, no, there's rest you. Move forward. I said, keep moving. Standing still means engaging God's word. There are going to be storms that will try to shift you left and right. But as long as you are standing still on God's word. Peter saw Jesus walking on water. And then, Jesus said, hey, is that Jesus? He said, oh, you're left with me. He said, come. Jesus gave him his word. 
Peter stepped out of the boat confidently. You see, there's something about God's word that boosts your confidence. The Bible says, Romans chapter 1, verse 7, faith comes by by hearing and hearing and hearing. Your faith is lifted when the word of God fills you. He heard the they are on the sea. He's in the boat and see, sees Jesus walking and say, and say, Is that you? He say, Yeah, Master. He said, Come. He didn't think twice because his faith was lifted and he started walking on water. Peter, not, it has never been done before. Walking on water. Walking on water. Then immediately the Bible says he took his eyes off Jesus. Jesus, the word. In the beginning was the word. The word was God and the word was God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among them. Jesus was the word. He took his, his eyes off the word. He took his eyes off Jesus. And the Bible said he began to sink. When you shift and take your eyes off the word of God, you will begin to sink. For you to be able to have faith to cross the Red Sea, you must be buried in the word. So, the noise that is coming from outside, the news you are hearing, you must block your ears with God's word. And the problem is, we have opened ourselves, we don't engage God's word, so we have opened ourselves that when, whatever the enemy comes, oh Jesus, thank you Holy Ghost. So, in the garden, Adam was in the garden with Eve. And then the serpent convinced them, and then it came. When the serpent came, do you, do you know what the question asked? He said, did God say, questioning the word, as long as their basis was the word, he knew that they have a point. So when he, what he would try to do was that to discredit the word. He said, oh, forget about what he's saying. Now, what he told you is a lie. If you eat it, your eyes will be open like him. You'll become like God. Eat the word. Disobey. Don't, 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 don't agree with what he's saying to you. Don't believe what he's saying. When they ate it, that's when they fell. Many of us want to hear every other thing except the word of God. You want to hear that the problem that you're going to is your auntie that is behind. You see, if you are filled so much with the word of God, if it is your auntie, it will not matter anymore. Because the Bible says in the book of Acts, in the, in the city of Ephesus, so mightily grew the word and it prevailed. The word always prevailed no matter the condition. So the word of the Lord came and told them, he said, he said tell the people to move forward. And then Moses said, come on, you guys, let's go. Stand still. You see the deliverance that God will bring to us today. For the Egyptians you see today, you shall see them no more. Faith was lifted. And then, okay, they all began to walk. He stepped in, into the sea, stretched forth his hand. And the Bible said the sea parted into two. But they, they only were able to make a move and to take a step because a word had come to move forward. We are talking about faith here. For your faith to work, you must stand still on God's word. What has God said? What is written? What has God told you in your secret chamber and closet? Anytime I am faced with challenges, all I need to do is to hear what God is saying. So, so, so God asked, when he told him that, he said, he said uh, uh, when I, we heard that you came, we saw you and we're, you knew that we were naked. He said, who told you? Who have you been listening to? What voice is speaking to you? That is why you don't have faith in God. You are hearing people, unbelievers. Look at Hebrews chapter 2, uh, chapter 4. Four, I think the verse 12, Hebrews chapter, um, uh, give me Hebrews chapter 4, I believe the verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4. It says, the word that was preached to us was also preached to them. No, that's not what, hold on. So, so, so the verse number 2, 2, not 12. Hebrews 4, 2. 4, 2. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard, they heard. They did not, it did not profit them 
not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. So, you are hearing the word, you are not believing the word, so you are not acting upon the word, so the word is not profiting you. When the woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5 heard that Jesus has the ability to heal, immediately she convinced and she told herself, if I can only touch, and then she acted. And when she acted, her faith was rewarded. It, is, it all began by when she heard about what she heard about Jesus. That made her make a decision. What have you been hearing? Who have you been listening to? Which voices have been speaking to you? Who are the friends you are talking to? One of the most dangerous places for you to be is that you are listening to people who are worldly, carnal, and unbelievers. They will kill the little faith that you have. I have made a decision that anybody who says anything discouraging, I cut them off. Anybody who, because already I am, there are voices I'm contending with. I don't need more voices to come in negativity. No, I don't need that. There are too many voices I'm dealing with. I need the voice that will tell me that even though you are down, you will rise up again. I need the voice of faith, the voice of encouragement. Even though things are not working, but stand still and see the salvation. I'm already seeing the rest. I'm already hearing the chariot after me. I don't need anybody else to remind me that, hey, the chariots are coming. Hey, the rest. No, I need someone to tell me, even though you are stuck here, the Egyptians you are seeing today, you shall see them no more. You must engage the word. Am I helping somebody here? And the devil is very crafty. He's, he's, very, he's, he's very, very, very crafty that when you are at your lowest moment, when your, your faith level is going low, is going low, then he brings some faithless unbeliever. And let me say this, sometimes even they come as like wolf, but like sheep, but they are wolves. Oh, we've been born again for a long time. We've been going to church. Oh. Hey, Royal House, we started Royal House. Oh. It doesn't matter whether you started. It is not the beginning of a thing that matters. It is the end of It is you being able to complete and to finish. Recently, I was watching some thing that somebody sent to me. A whole man of God who grew up in the faith and now has ended up at a fetish priest. A man of God. We used to look up to him. Preaching the word. Casting out demons. Calling down the presence of God. Now he's sitting with a fetish priest. Like his son's age. And the fetish priest is commanding him and uh, uh, screaming and raising his voice on him to talk. Someone says, stand still. Hmm. Because, because when you stand still, then the next thing that happens is that miracles are about to happen. So when he says, stand still, he says, don't fret. Don't be afraid. Don't be moved by what you are hearing, what you are seeing, what you are experiencing. Now, let's move forward. When the Bible said they stepped into the water, the water parted ways and they were able to walk on dry ground. And that even did not stop the Egyptians. They also decided to pursue them. And then God instructed Moses, close the, the, the water back and he consumed them and they all died in there. And they walked on dry ground and they escaped Egyptians. And they went into the wilderness leading to the promised land. What am I saying here? Whenever you are able to overcome fear, Whenever you engage the word and you remind yourself when you are faced with challenges, the next thing that is going to happen is a miracle. Because walking in, in the, in, uh, for the sea to part, to part into two and to walk on dry ground was a miraculous act by God alone. Anybody who does not entertain fear, anybody who engages the word of God always sees the miraculous hand of God in their life. He parted they walked on dry ground. And the same people who thought that their life was over, survived. You are looking for a miracle? It starts with your faith in God. You are believing God for a testimony? Today we will not be talking about Moses and the Israelites and crossing the Red Sea if they were faithless. 
they would have all perished in the Red Sea. Tied. The Egyptians would have slaughtered them. I like the way the place is come. The question I want to leave you as I close. What is your Red Sea? What is that problem in front of you? That looks impossible. That you need a miracle. What is that thing that you left behind and is still after your life? Some of you, you thought, that, you know, you, you got healed for, from that sickness and all of a sudden they say that it is coming back. It is an Egyptian that has changed his mind. Some of you, it's like you look ahead of you, you thought that, oh, by this time you should have gotten to that place. Then all of a sudden something shows up. But then I want to assure you, the God who started the journey with you, he will stick with you and finish with you. And then the Bible says that, look at the Exodus, Exodus chapter 13, the verse number 20, 13 verse 21, 21, 21, 21. It says, and the Lord went before them. This was before they came to the Red Sea. This was way before the Egyptians changed their mind. And the Lord went before them by the pillar of cloud to lead them in the way and by night a pillar of fire to give them light so as to go by day and by night. So God was leading these people when they came to the Red Sea. He was right there with them. God was leading them when the Egyptians changed their mind. He was with them, he said, by a pillar by day, by the pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night as light. So in front of them and behind them the omnipotent God was watching over them. He was the one leading them. People of faith are people who recognize that on this journey of life, they are not alone. Listen, if you ever think that you are working or you can do it on your own, you are deceiving yourself. Accept the Lord. Accept the Lord. Accept the Lord. The journey of life is so... A man was traveling from Jerusalem to Jericho and the Bible says he fell among thieves. Listen, if he knew that he would have been able to... They were going to he was going to be robbed and he was going to fall among thieves from the beginning, he wouldn't have started the journey. Every journey, there are uncertainties. We don't know what is on the journey, but we know who is with us. He goes before us and he's behind us. And the Bible says that now when they are about to cross, the pillar of fire came behind them. The angel of the Lord who was traveling with them, if you, the, chapter 14, one of the verses say, an angel of the Lord who was traveling with them came behind them to protect them from the Egyptians. Why are you crying? Why are you worried? Tell your neighbor, God is with you. He's leading you. He's guiding you. He's protecting you. You are not alone. The Lord is with you. And you shall arrive. Despite the opposition. Despite the uh, challenges. No matter what you are going through. What you are confronted with. God is with you. In, despite the bad news you receive. The Lord is with you. So where was this God and his presence when they came to the Red Sea? Where was God? He was right there. Because he knew he had control and power over those things, it didn't worry him for them to come to the place of the Red Sea. God has control over every situation you will go through. There is, there is no problem that has come to us by, that is surprising to God. Everything that we are going through is no surprise to God. You just have to have the element of faith. That if he has brought you to that place, he will bring you through it. You will go through that problem. You will go through that furnace. You will enter that furnace and come out on head. And at the end, your God will be glorified. Your faith in God will be rewarded. Don't be afraid of what is after you, what you are seeing, what you are hearing, what is contending. What killed others will not kill you. What worked against others will not work against you. 
you are a different and a covenanted child of God. I'm speaking to from my spirit to your spirit that don't be afraid. You shall see the salvation of the Lord. For the Egyptians you see today, you shall see them again no more. God bless you. I love you. Rise up on your feet. When the oceans rise and sun lift up your two hands. Say, I will, I I will soar with you. you. Abba, lift up your voice. Say, Father, Father, you you are are king over the flood. Say, lift up your two hands. Will be still. No, you are God. Lift up your voice. Say, I'll be still. I will be, be still. No, you are Say, when, when the oceans rise. Father, you are lift up your two hands. Father, you are Father, Over. Over. I will be still. And I will be still. No, you are God. Lift up your voice. Lift up your hands. Say, I will be still. No, you. When the oceans rise, say, when the oceans rise, lift up your voice. I will soar. I will soar with you. Abide. Rest on. Father, you are. You are king over the flood. I will be still. You have come to a hard place. When you look ahead of you and behind you, it's like there is no way out. You are stuck. You can tell there is, humanly speaking, it looks impossible. Like what you are going through, what you are feeling, what you are experiencing, you will never come out of it. You will never survive it. And you want me to stand with you, uh, me and the pastors who are here, we are going to agree that God will make a way, the same way he made a way in the Red Sea for you. That your faith in God will be strengthened. If you are here, you want me to stand with you in prayer. Step out. When the oceans rise, if you are here, let's do this quick. It's like you are the hard place. So with you, above the storm. Father, you are a father. You are king over the no, you are God. No, you. I will be still. Say, will be still. No, you are God. the pastors surround them and uh, my ministers surround them. We are going to pray. And church, stretch out your hands. I believe God. Listen, listen. The Spirit of the Lord is telling me to tell you. He said, God said, you know the statement I made that what God tells you in the light, do not doubt it in, in, uh, in the dark. Right? Don't doubt it. When you are in the dark. The Lord said he has already, whatever you are going through, he has already given you a word. Don't doubt the word. The Lord said I should tell you, he has already given you a word and that word will stand. Whatever God has said already concerning the situation, he said, hold on to it. I just heard God. Stretch out your hands. 
I want us to pray for this one. Whatever, we don't know whatever they are dealing with, where they are, but whatever looks impossible, whatever situation that has overwhelmed, that has troubled them, we are asking God, the same way God made a way in the Red Sea, an impossible situation, may the Lord make a way for them. May the Lord intervene. Lift up your voice, begin to pray. Those of you in front, pastors, leaders, pray for them. Ministers, lift up your voice. Let's pray for them. Let's commit them into God's hands. Pray. Church, pray, pray. Iba kapa mo senteri abakapa. Iba paya mo senteri abaka. Pray them true. Pray them true. Pray them true. May the Lord lift them up. May the Lord carry them on eagles' wings. Lift up your voice. Pray, 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 pray. Pray. Pray for them. Yebakapaya. Any impossibility, anything that has become a mountain, let it be moved. We command it to move. Any resi, let it be parted into two. Any furnace, fire, they find themselves in. May the Lord rescue and deliver them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Those in front, I speak as by the grace and the unction that God has placed upon me. And by the call that God called me. And by the office that he has positioned me. I stand as the Moses in your life. And I speak to every resi, proverbial resi. Anything that looks like a resi looks like an impossibility in your life. Anything that looks like an Egyptian that is pursuing you, that will not let you be, will not let you go. Today, in the name of Jesus, let that thing be swallowed by the sea. May the Lord work a miracle in your life. May the Lord give you a testimony. May the Lord turn your life around. May the Lord wipe away your tears. May the Lord rescue you by his mighty right hand. May the Lord deliver you. May the Lord save you. May the Lord heal you. May Jehovah make a way for you where there seems to be no way. I speak over your life. And I declare that your faith in God will not fail. May you be rewarded because you have trusted God. May Jehovah, who is a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, may he do that which he is an expert in doing. I declare that your testimony has come. Your deliverance has come. Your healing has come. I declare over your life that tomorrow by this time, a week by this time, a month by this time, a year by this time, you will look back and say that Ebenezer, this is how far the Lord has helped you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. Let's celebrate your testimony. God bless you. Congratulations. people tell them tell them words of life tell them no matter what you are going through the lord has made a way he has made a way sit up you see how you see how you must come to church you see how encouraged you are no, 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 no. When the weak, the enemy raises his ugly head, this word will be playing in your spirit. It will play in your mind. If you doubt it, go back to YouTube and go and listen to it. The devil is a liar. Who tells you that God is a gimmick? Don't let anything cripple your faith. It's all in your faith, your belief, your conviction, and the action, corresponding action you add to it. 
Sometimes I'll be there when some voice will just come and then I'll just rebuke the voice. I'll just begin to worship. I say, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. So, so, so now I tell myself, oh, you, see, you see, anytime the enemy comes with a negative voice, you must counter it. The Bible says, and when Goliath spoke, David said, you know, whenever Goliath spoke, uh, David will counter the words of Goliath. Because when you don't counter, as he keeps saying, I keep saying, you start believing and you start beginning to doubt God and you start receiving and it begins to take a grip on you. And by the time you see like Job, the thing that I fear has come. One day I had, when I came to this country, one day I had, I thought I was going to die. I was working, Seki City. It was my lunch time. So I went to go sleep in my car. It was one hour. I think that we, I don't know whether I was even fasting or something. I went to go sleep in my car to take a nap for the one, one hour. All of a sudden, when I went to my car, I started feeling sick. I wasn't feeling well at all. And for sure, it's like I'm, it's like I'm going to die right away. So immediately I called one of my colleagues there and I said, I'm in my car. Just to, a voice was telling me, just make sure you tell somebody because if you don't take time, you're going to go very soon. So I told the guy that I'm, I'm in the car. Just, I just wanted him to know. And then I told him, I said, no, 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 no. I didn't come to America to come and die. No, 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 no. I don't even have any. So I'm, now all this thought was going. So if I die right now, what's going to happen? Who are they going to call? Am my family going to be able to send money for my body to be sent? Or who is going to bury me here? Because I don't have anybody. It's just me. Immediately, I gathered a little strength. And I began to say, I will not die, but leave. Whatever is going on, I rebuke the devourer. I receive strength. I receive healing. By the time my lunch is over, it's like nothing has happened. And where that attack came from, I had no idea. Oh, then I get married. Married to this beautiful lady that I want to enjoy for the rest of my life. So, we were in the house, man of God, one day. I was in the other room or the living room doing something. And I heard a scream of my name. I was called. So, this wasn't a romantic one. You know, there are certain times when they call you. But the way you are called, you know what will be happening afterwards. So this was not those kind of romantic calls. <laughs> so, so, so I had, it was like, a, like, you know, a kind of call of rescue. I need help. So I rush in there. My wife is on the floor. So I'm like, what is, are you okay? What is, oh, help me up, help me up. I said, what do you mean help you? I stand up, he said, I can't walk. Half of her body, she couldn't move. Oh, like we're just home, you know, and you just went upstairs and what is happening? Like, so I asked her, take a, she can't even take a step. Hey, somebody's daughter. She's the only child of her mother. What am I going to call her? That, you know, in Africa where I'm coming from, when you marry and your spouse dies, sometimes they begin to suspect you. And much more, she's in America, the only daughter of her mother. Her mother's hope. So, immediately I heard a voice. This is an attack. So, we started praying. I said, devil, you're a liar. She said she wanted to use the bathroom. So, I'm helping her to move to the bathroom. And I'm rebuking. I rebuke. I rebuke. I rebuke. I rebuke. We prayed. We prayed. We prayed. Immediately, she was okay. Strangely, whatever it is, just left. Oh, are you clapping or doing something like clapping? The devil didn't say that because I'm a man of God and she's the first lady, we're not going to attack. The devil tried. But my faith, I rebuke. I said, I will not marry a woman then I have to be taking care of her in a room. No. I'm not, at that, at that, not in that position. Rebuke them. So she was okay. She came to her and said, she's fine. I said, just for the sake of medical, let's go and make sure that everything is okay with it. The stripper, we went to the hospital. They ran all the tests under the sun. Nothing. The doctors were even confused. Like, you people, what you're telling her, is it true? Did it really happen? Because nothing. Her pressure wasn't up. Nothing. Nothing was wrong with her. But we had to counter what the enemy was trying to do. This way, when you wake up in the morning, say, I command the day and I bring every evil activity under control. I'll not be a victim. A, a victim, I'll be a victor. The Bible says it is our faith that overcomes the world. You, you declare that I am an overcomer. 
my body is, is subject and is under the control of the Holy Spirit. Not sickness and disease. Amen. This morning, we want to give a sacrifice and offering. Giving is an act of faith. If you love God, you show it in action, which is faith. So I want you to give a sacrifice to God that honors him, that pleases him, that shows that you believe him, that he's the source of the blessing you have. Let's do this very quick. In the next three minutes, we should be out of this place. Blessing the praise to the one who is forever. Also, if you have the lost tithe, it's 10%. Come forward with your tithe. 10%. It belongs to God. You want to honor God with your tithe. It's 10% of your income. Those of you watching at home, release your offering. Release your tithe. And any special pledge. And this message has moved you. You want to sow into the message and believe God. So, Pastor Alex, I don't know why lately, God has been laying on my heart. I've been praying for you. I don't know why lately, almost every day, you know, God drops you in my spirit. You are very close to a major breakthrough. I, I, I don't know whether you are at the point that the enemy is speaking doubt and, 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 and unbelief or your faith level is... I don't know, but God has been dropping you in my spirit. And I'm telling you, you are at the verge of a major breakthrough. Your story will not end like this. Your story will not end like this. Mark my words. You, this I could have told you one on one, but I'm saying it publicly because when I hear God and when I've heard God, I like to say it publicly so that when the testimony comes and you are standing here sharing, you know, they'll know that God already spoke this word. Your story will not end like this. We shall testify of God's faithfulness and God's goodness. All the investment you have made in the kingdom of God will be rewarded. God is not a man that he should... You should, you should forget all your labor of love that you have shown towards him and continue to say the Lord. If your tithe is here, come forward. The Lord's tithe, 10%. Or more, it belongs to God. God bless you. On the glory Amen, 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 bless The lost tithe, if you are coming, I'm waiting for you. If you are giving your offering, go ahead. Say amen. Say it again for the last time. Glory and honor and power, say There's somebody here, there's somebody here, you are going to own a hotel. I said you're going to own a hotel. Mark my words. You're going to own a hotel. I just saw a vision right now as I stood there. I just saw it. Somebody here, you are going to own a hotel. Already, I know people in Amis who have apartment buildings and stuff like that. But this is a major hotel. It's a hotel. Don't ever disqualify yourself. Oh. What you don't believe in, you never become. No. The, the people who have it, you know, they, are not, they are not better than you. You are the one disqualifying yourself. The land is for you also. Lift up your hand. Say in the name of Jesus. Every word of prophecy and word of promise over my life shall come to pass. I declare that the word of the Lord concerning my finances my health, my career, my ministry shall be fulfilled. I connect to the word of the Lord this morning and I declare what God has said to me in private shall manifest in the public. I declare I will not doubt God's word, but rather I will believe and I enforce into manifestation. Oh God, Every red sea before me, I move forward and I declare I will arrive in my Canaan in Jesus' name.
Those of you with the lost sight, I pray for open heaven. I pray that the covenant keeping God will keep his covenant with you. He will remember you. He will visit you. He will bless you. He will prosper you. He will increase you. He will enlarge you. May every secret and desire of yours be granted. Because you have obeyed the voice of God in giving your sight. May the Lord who rewards faithfulness and obedience, may he reward you accordingly. Any need in your life, let the need be granted. May the need be supplied in the mighty name of Jesus. May this altar that is receiving your fight receive you also. May the voice of the altar be activated. In Jesus' mighty name, I declare it so. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you.